Okay, so we have a little clue that fossil carbon will not be available forever and it's going to get a little more costly during your lifetimes. That brings us to talking about alternative forms of energy. This section is called energy fungibility. The word fungibility means exchangeable. Is $1,200 exchangeable with 1,000 euros, exchangeable with one ounce of gold? Yes but not all energy is created equal in what it can do for us. In nature, different creatures are evolved to prefer different food sources. The same amount of calories are in a grasshopper as in some flower nectar, but a hummingbird is only evolved to process and eat the nectar. It couldn't survive on grasshoppers. So what does this mean for human systems? Let's take a look. This graph shows the United States in 2017 how we used our energy. On the left, it shows petroleum, coal, natural gas, renewables. On the right, it shows the end usages in pink, residential, commercial, industrial, transportation. In the United States, only around 20% of the energy services we use are electric, the rest being heating, transportation, etc. So when comparing different energy types, we have to compare their energy properties. And there's dozens of different energy properties. And in this short video, we'll look at six or eight of them. First of all, there's spatial distribution, which is different areas of the world have different access to energy. This is a map of Denmark. The really dark colored circles are where there's very high wind capacity and wind Whereas the lighter color circles, you can put a wind turbine there, but it won't generate as much energy because it's not as windy. Another major energy property is intermittence and variability. The sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow, yet our industrial systems are conditioned to have 24-7 access to electricity. So the stochastic nature of weather ends up being an important energy property. There's such a thing called energy density, which is how much energy is in a certain volume or a certain weight of mass. So you can see that mankind's history is one of going higher and higher up the energy density curve. And the three fuels circled in red, diesel, kerosene, and gasoline, are incredibly energy dense for the amount of energy they have in a small space. Recall our horsepower example showing how many horses worth of power could be packed into a small engine. If you imagine an energy carrier which can be stored without degradation for a hundred million years and then used in a 12 pound hand carried chainsaw to give a single human the abilities of Paul Bunyan, you're talking about some real superhero juice. By the way, speaking of energy density and horsepower, it would take 100,000 horses to generate the short-term power needed to fly a passenger jet. In addition to energy density, there's power density, which is how much power capacity there is per unit of land area. Fossil fuels are very power dense. They have small land footprints for the amount of energy that they can produce relative to renewables. So everything else being equal, a large scale move to renewables will require a lot more land because they have lower power density. Carbon intensity is also another very important energy property. Coal, oil, and natural gas have very high carbon per unit of energy measures, whereas solar and wind have very low carbon in the amount of energy they emit. We, as a species, cannot continue to burn this amount of energy with this amount of carbon intensity or our ancestors and other species are going to live in a much different, hotter, less habitable world. And let's not forget energy surplus. Different energy types have different energy outputs for the amount of energy and non-renewable resource inputs. Gasoline, wind turbines, solar panels, biofuels like corn ethanol all have different amounts of energy surplus. Corn ethanol, for example, is really not an energy source. It's an energy conversion where we take natural gas and fertilizer and sunlight and water and heat and convert a crop into a liquid fuel. 
it is a very tiny energy surplus relative to gasoline and oil. Energy efficiency is a very important energy property. Conventional gasoline powered vehicles only convert around 20% of the energy stored in the gasoline to power at the wheels. Electric engines, however, are far more efficient. They convert 60% of the electrical energy from the grid to power at the wheels. And there's such a thing as energy co-products. Only about 70% of the 8 billion barrels of crude oil used annually in the United States is used to produce gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and heating oil. The other 25% results in a vast array of petroleum products, crayons, heart valves, telephones, mattresses, helmets, glasses, toilet seats, fertilizer, aspirin, fishing poles, shampoo, paints, tires, condoms, luggage, tents, lipstick, ammonia and other manufacturing chemicals, asphalt, and many more. There is no simple or cheap non-fossil substitute for most of these products. Energy complexity. Over the last several hundred years, we've increased the complexity of our energy systems significantly. We used to just burn wood for heat or have simple windmills in Holland with very few moving pieces. We use draft animals with harnesses to pull things. But now we have very complex global supply chains with different manufacturing capabilities that have furnaces and dyeing and printing and lamination and the end products have inverters and complicated inputs including rare earth metals etc so our modern systems are highly complex and finally energy quality which is what our society requires in energy terms saudi arabia is one of the richest energy nations in the world because they sit on all these oil and gas fields but a hundred years ago, oil and gas was not of value to the Yabal tribespeople that lived in Saudi Arabia. They valued horses and camels. So what might be the energy quality type in the future that we most value? So this was a quick whirlwind look at energy fungibility. The fact that just like in nature, not all jewels are created equal in what they can accomplish. The same goes for human systems. Not all energy types will provide the benefits that we're used to and expect going forward. The next video is going to talk about going forward. What are the issues relevant to the upcoming energy transition?